This is an informational video about the electrophysiology study and the catheter ablation procedure. We will give you some information about the heart and the conditions that will need a catheter ablation, information you'll need before coming to the hospital, what to expect during your stay, and what you need to do when you go home. First, let's talk a little bit about the heart and how it works. The heart has four chambers. Two that collect the blood, the atria, and two that pump the blood, the ventricles. The heartbeat is controlled by an electrical system within the walls of the heart. There's one special area in the heart that usually controls the heart rate. This area is called the SA node. It is the heart's natural pacemaker. The SA node makes an electrical signal that flows through the heart across the atrium to another special area in the heart called the AV node. The AV node is important because it coordinates the signals flowing from the atria to the ventricles. Once the signals flow through the ventricles, the heart will repolarize or reset itself for the next beat. Your heart has many mechanisms to keep itself beating at its normal rate. However, it may sometimes beat abnormally too fast or too slow, and this is referred to as arrhythmia. Superventricular tachycardia, or SVT, is a broad category of arrhythmias which involve the heart above the ventricular conduction system. SVT is not a life-threatening condition and may not always require treatment. What follows are the mechanisms of the most common types of SVTs. Atrial ventricular reciprocating tachycardia, or AVRT, is a type of SVT that involves an accessory pathway. This means that there's an extra connection between the atria and ventricles, which allows signals to travel in a way that it normally cannot. This extra connection can allow the electrical signal to travel in a circle around the heart, which makes it beat faster than normal. Luckily, this does not happen all the time meaning people will only experience really fast heart rate once in a while. Wolf Parkinson White is a special type of AVRT because the accessory pathway lets electrical signals travel across the extra connection even when the heart is beating at a normal rate. People with this condition will have a delta wave on their ECG. Atrial ventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia, or AVNRT, is a type of SVT where the generation of impulses occurred inside the AV node. This happens during the maturation of the heart, when the AV node develops in a way to allow for electrical short circuits. This allows the impulse to travel in a circular motion, overriding the SA node and producing a very rapid heart rate. Ectopic atrial tachycardia is a type of SVT where the electrical impulses that make your heart beat isn't generated by the SA node. Instead, it is started somewhere else in the atrium by an abnormal group of cells. Several other types of abnormal heart rhythms can be treated with catheter ablation therapy. These include atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, and ventricular tachycardia. Other than catheter ablation, Treatments for arrhythmias may include medications or certain actions like the Valsalva maneuver, which you already may be familiar with. The decision to have a catheter ablation procedure is mainly dependent on patient or family choice. As with any medical procedures, there can be complications and some of them are serious. Fortunately, these are rare occur in less than 1% of the cases. Here are some things to note before the procedure. No eating or drinking starting at midnight before the procedure. Stop taking any antiarrhythmic drugs 48 hours before the procedure. Take a pregnancy test if you're a female older than 13. You will first arrive at the daycare surgery. Inside, you'll be able to wait with your family while the catheter lab is being prepared. You can rest on the beds or play at the entertainment center. Here, you will also be able to meet and talk with the healthcare staff. Once everything is ready, you'll be transferred into the catheter lab.
Usually, the procedure takes about three to four hours. The equipment required for this procedure include the imaging equipment, the electrophysiology machine, the anesthesia machine, catheters, and ultrasound machine. First, an IV tube will be inserted into your hand. Then, you'll be given anesthesia before the catheters are inserted. Typically, catheters are inserted through the femoral vein, but other sites of entry are also possible. Often, multiple catheters are inserted into each vein. Once the catheters reach the heart, they are inserted into their respective positions with the help of X-ray images. The catheters will stimulate the heart and record the signals at each location. Using this data, the location of the abnormal pathway can be found. An ablation catheter can then be inserted in order to destroy the accessory pathway. Occasionally, a needle puncture across the septum may be required to insert the catheter into its position. The heart is stimulated again to ensure that the pathway is destroyed. Finally, the catheters are removed. After the procedure, you'll be moved to the recovery area where you will lie flat in bed for a few hours. While some can leave on the same day, most stay one night in the hospital. You may also notice a slight bruising at the location where the catheter was inserted. After leaving the hospital, you'll be asked to take aspirin daily for one month. Avoid any strenuous physical activity for two days after your procedure. Intense physical exertion can be gradually resumed after two weeks. You will also be followed up by your physician.